Hey, what's up everyone? It is I, the man, the myth, the mustache, Tim here, and I want to welcome you to part 14 of What If Deku Was Trained by Stain? I just wanted to drop in and say hello, sit back and relax. Now, enough of me chatting, let's get into the story, shall we? The night was still young, yet Stain could not waver the feeling of dread crawling beneath his skin. From the many uneventful counters he had with the League of Villains, he knew well that if his suspicions were correct, a lot of them would get hurt. However, from the perspective of being a villain himself before going back to vigilanteism, the group seemed to lack quality amongst its ranks. And then it dawned upon him. Stain, sir, there are suspicious movements observed from the farther parts of the forest. The warp gate and swarming villains coming out of it. Stain never worried about the villains attacking Yue Hai, for there were other things in his plate. It just so happened that the class the League preferred to infiltrate and induce turmoil upon had inherent real heroes, and a true hero amongst them. In this, he placed it upon himself to see to it that these chosen children would face the future for themselves to be of a greater example as heroes in this rotten society. Meanwhile, Pixie Bob announced the test of courage, and a majority of the students cheered in excitement. Some due to the chance to witness seeing their classmates frightened, while some looked forward to seeing which of them would scare their fellow young heroes the best. But the only ones not excited were a select few students from classes 1A and 1B, who had failed the test and were therefore required to take remedial classes instead of participating in tonight's event. When Pixie Bob finished laying out the rules, the pairings were drawn. Midoriya ended up being alone, not that he minded, of course. He just thought it could be an opportunity to know more about his classmates. But things were a little too tranquil, he thought, as his mind wandered off a little, thinking about the attack on the USJ. However, Midoriya would forget about the images of the knight's tranquility as two villains appeared in front of him. One of the villains successfully knocked out Pixie Bob when it advanced. While the Pussycats shifted their stance into the offensive, it crossed Midoriya's mind that under these attacks, Kota was alone. Amidst Mandalay's use of her telepathy, Midoriya assumed she was directing the teachers on what to do. Soon, he heard her voice warning about evacuation, as the student's safety was top priority. The instructors assigned some of the students to scatter and provide aid where necessary. Ida was about to leave with Midoriya, but Midoriya said he would catch up later as Kota could probably be off somewhere and in danger. It was a good thing Midoriya knew where the kid had hidden himself already. That fact alone would ease the whole retrieval. However, when Midoriya arrived, a villain towered menacingly over Kota, who was immobilized in fear. As the villain prepared to attack, Midoriya had well anticipated this, so he powered one for all, lunged towards Kota, and got the boy out of the way with him. Although, as Midoriya took in the situation, his phone was ruined in the process, making communication impossible. But the priority remained the same, Kota's safety. Kota, get behind me, and on my signal, take a straight shot to save yourself, and I'll follow after, okay? I'll always be here to save you. Oh, that's some heroic speech you got there, green boy. Would that be your last words before I finish you off? The muscular villain taunted, a condescending smirk contorting his features. Midoriya had left his blades in his quarters, as he never expected this to happen. It could have done something to distract the villain. He could only do so much with a little percentage of control he had over one for all. This is not the time for this. To protect Kota is my number one priority, he thought to himself, stealing his nerves along the way as he powered up to 100% neglectful of the risks as he and the villain continued their violent tango. While Midoriya deemed it a success to inflict injuries on the villain, it still looked like a near-losing battle with twice the amount of injuries he sustained. Wait, I recognize you. You're one of the brats in the list. The villain's voice trailed off while he charged, his fists finding their way to meet Midoriya's stomach, which almost knocked the young hero out. There, Kota's warning erupted as he informed Midoriya that the man in front of them was Muscular, who was responsible for the murder of Kota's parents. Is that the League's goal tonight? To bring my death? 
Muscular's laughter boomed while he gained his stance once more. That, and maybe before your death, you can tell me where I can find this Bakugo. He's a greater priority than your death. Kachan, what offense did he commit against the League? For a moment, Midoriya felt panic at the sound of his childhood friend's name on the mouth of the League of Villains member. But before Midoriya could figure out why the attack was going on, various blades seemingly fell out of nowhere, caging the villain. Midoriya! The intruder called out as if they were very familiar with Midoriya's name. Their identity, however, remained foreign to him. Save the kid and aid your classmates as best you can. At first, Midoriya found himself perplexed, for he expected the intruder to be the villain's backup. But as Muscular struggled to gain mobility, it hit him. This one, whose fashion resembled his mentor, was probably the new student he took in after the Hosu incident, Spinner. Meanwhile, the one behind the opponent's immobility was the master himself, probably cautious of communicating with Midoriya in an open space. With the villain incapacitated, Midoriya gave a knowing nod of both understanding and gratefulness towards the older apprentice and their master. I will do just so. Thank you. Immediately, he activated his quirk, followed by taking the kid into his arms and leapt away to get to Aizawa as soon as possible. He repeated the words Muscular told him to himself about Bakugo being of greater priority than he was on their list. But he couldn't think of as to why. While they were on their way, Kota reflected as to what Mandalay had told him back then. One day, Kota, when you have that experience of being saved, you'll understand why your parents chose what they did. Why? The child surprisingly spoke out of the blue, gaining Midoriya's attention while they passed almost through half of the forest, undetected by other villains. Are you asking me why I did what I did back there, Kota? Yes, I wanted to understand why you have to do what you did, and why my parents did the same thing. He was just a child trying to understand everything. Yet, he needed to know, for he would remember this day, when he could be hopefully old enough to look for more than a child's perspective. Because... Despite the soreness of his body and the urgency of the situation, Midoriya decided to stop a little to address the child's inquiry. Koda, that's what heroes do. Some would selflessly break their own body or give up what they held most for others. A selfless act is the essence of a hero. After that, they proceeded on their way, with Midoriya silent about the sobs he heard as a respect for Koda's privacy. Finally, as Aizawa came into view, the teacher knew from the look of his problem student that there was a villain encounter that had preceded their arrival. And so, relief washed over him with the sight of a less injured Midoriya, especially with how hard it was for his body to control his quirk. Mr. Aizawa! Midoriya's tone implied that he probably had valuable information and that someone was in danger while they were conversing at the moment. Kachan! Kachan is their target! They told me his capture is of great importance! What should we do? The teacher took Koda from his student's arms. He straightened up his back along with the usual hard look reflected in his eyes. A telltale sign of an incoming order, from a hero to an inspiring one. Midoriya, go find Mandalay. Make sure she tells everyone that I will allow the students to utilize their quirks in the battle for self-defense. I shall take responsibility afterward. Yes, sir! By the time Midoriya had finally reached Mandalay, the villains that had initially attacked them were down. There was a worried look in her eye about Kota, but Midoriya assured the child's safety as he just brought him to Aizawa. Mandalay, Mr. Aizawa gave me an order for you to tell everyone. Please tell everyone this. Aizawa will allow students to utilize their quirks in battle for self-defense. He'll take responsibility afterward. And let them also know that the villain's target is Kachan! Midoriya gave a curt nod and proceeded to leave, for he could not waste time. Every minute wasted could mean success for the villains. Mandalay was left to wonder as to who this Kachan was, but nevertheless, she still did as she was told. Listen up, everyone. Aizawa gave an order to utilize your quirks in the battle for defense. And the kid they call Kachan is the target of the villains. I repeat, Aizawa gave an order to utilize your quirks in battle and the kid they call Kachan is the target of the villains. She took a breath momentarily and continued her warning to the students. 
This Kachan is to avoid contact with the villains, especially any acting independently. While everyone who heard her was taken aback with surprise and worry, shrouding their nerves from their classmates, one felt the opposite. He was taking his run into the forest towards the villains on the opposite end. Kachan! Kachan! Stop talking in my head! Irritation was plastered upon his face because out of everyone to mess with, Bakugo would not be satisfied with the last message from Mandalay. It was unsatisfying enough for him that he was working with Todoroki, whom he called half and half bastard, along with the annoying villain with teeth blades. Their exchange of blows against the villain continued until it momentarily halted as Todoroki froze the villain's blades. Didn't you hear? She just said you were being targeted by the villains. Todoroki felt exasperated, for he knew the attitude of his classmate, because, like everyone else, Bakugo tended to be severely stubborn. Especially this time, it was becoming impossible to reason with him. That damn Deku did something, I just know it. Saying fight, then don't fight. Don't tell me what to do! If he was irritated just a while ago, then Bakugo was really angry now. He tried landing an explosion only to have another of the villain's teeth-like blades get in the way, as well as the ice from Todoroki against the villain. Although the option of retreating was on the table, considering the opponent's expert use of the terrain to his advantage, the students were driven into a corner. Usage of Todoroki's fire, as well as Bakugo's explosions, would risk burning the forest down, as well as igniting the gas surrounding them, and taking everyone with it. Meanwhile, on the other side of the forest, just near their current location, Midoriya and Shoji were dealing with Tokoyami's struggle against Dark Shadow, who had grown in size and was rampaging. They were both told to go away, as they would be killed by Dark Shadow. However, Midoriya refused to run. Midoriya, you get to choose right now. You can still move a little despite the injuries. Choose between Bakugo or Tokoyami. Even in this situation, Midoriya refused to run again. I can't do that. There must be a way to save both. That's the only option I will take. But they weren't lucky enough, for the villain who cut Mezzo's arm earlier returned with his teeth-like blades coming their way. The only option they could do was to lure Dark Shadow towards the villain, despite the risks in the gamble that they might see Bakugo along the way. In the distance, Midoriya could see the recognizable features of both Bakugo and Todoroki. Someone make a light! Before either could comprehend what the order was about, Dark Shadow clawed upon the villain and crushed its blade-like teeth before it had one final strike that knocked the opponent down. That was the time both Bakugo and Todoroki realized what transpired. Both of them generated a heavily controlled fire and explosion to light up Dark Shadow. This worked, effectively bringing back Dark Shadow to its original size and stopping the rampage. For a moment, Tokoyami was sorry for what Dark Shadow had done, which was rooted in his own weakness to control his quirk. He was quickly told by both Midoriya and Shoji not to feel guilty about it, that things like that indeed happen, and it was understandable as they were just in training still. Let's surround Bakugo on our way to Aizawa. That way, all sides are guarded. Bakugo hated the whole setup, for he was more than capable of protecting himself. Thus, he deemed this whole escorting thing unnecessary, for they wouldn't be any help anyway. Not far from them, both Ochako and Suyu were going against one of the villains whose affection for drawing blood from others was her greatest desire. She looked like she was of the same age as they were, yet the dangerous glint in her eyes implied no hesitation to kill. And that's our video for today, so thank you all for watching! Much appreciated, I hope you enjoyed it! Now, there are a few more things I want to go over before the video ends. First off, we have a second channel called Anime Deep Dive. Anime Deep Dive goes over the hard facts and lore of a wide variety of anime. It's sure to expand your weeb knowledge for all kinds of series, guaranteed. On top of that, we have a third channel called We the Celestials Naruto What Ifs. It's what we do on this channel already, but in the vast world and lore of Naruto. Go check it out if you're in the mood for some jutsu action! Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I want to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the descriptions below. 
If you're interested in what we do here at We the Celestials, then I would like to extend an invitation to join the team. Our only caveat is we only accept members who are 16 or older to join our crew. You can find us on our Discord, which you can locate in the description below. Our Discord is an all-around fantastic place to be, whether you're a fan or just looking to join our band of misfits. All you gotta do is hit up the recruitment server and sign up for whichever category of work fulfills your interests. And that's it for us for today's video, so thank you all for watching! And please, I'm asking you, please, have a great day!